please do. <laughs> Are you with family? You got, oh, wait, wait. Okay. Yeah, yeah, my wife, my wife and, and our, we got two couples from our uh, neighborhood. You know, I went, we were, had plants for a while, and so the three couples uh, all okay, went down. And actually, All right. Hey, Sully, let's get to the uh, trivia question first. Got it wrong, by the way. I get it right. I'm not happy about it. Since 2011, seven Florida State players have been picked by the Bills, from which college have four Bills been drafted? Second most. And that is Clemson. There you have it. Sammy Watkins, I should have, you know, I'm a little mad at myself because of, of the Watkins thing, and it felt like it was a little, it was kind of sitting there for me, and I got it wrong. I was thinking C.J. Spiller, but he was 2010, so there's five. That's a good point. All right, listen, we have uh, Vic Carucci on the line right, right now to talk about the draft. Vic is down in Florida, chilling, soaking up the sun, and has the draft behind him. So congratulations on that, Vic. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey, hey uh, let's go through it first of all. Uh, when you look at, at how the Bills came out of it, it's really tough. They're getting lousy grades, as Sully mentioned before, because they didn't have a first-round pick. I mean, you're, you can't give them an A, really, when they didn't have a first-round right. pick. But when you look at some of the other picks, how do you think that they com came out of it overall? Well, I, I went in with fairly low expectations, not so much because of the first-round pick. I'll, I'll give the fact that you, you view that the way you really should view that, and, and that is Sammy Watkins. And if you believe he's going to be the player you think he will be, after an injury played season, not spectacular, solid, but not overwhelming, certainly not fourth overall pick status in terms of his performance, you, you do factor that into really your, your thought process. I know the Bills do that. Where I sort of measured my thoughts on, on what they would do was because of what else they did in the offseason. I thought all the pretty aggressive moves in free agency and the areas they had next there handled the the major spots, and then the draft became what I kind of thought it would be, a little bit of an exercise of, of filling spots. And by no means do I think it was anything spectacular, but you know, we'll see how that all works out. I, I think they did go in with the idea that their board would, would guide them to maybe certain players that had ratings that they felt were good, but I think at the same time, the positions that they addressed Starting with the quarterback in, set, in the second round, uh, were, were somewhat head scratchers because it just didn't give you that great sense of okay, they really you really got a place for this guy, or you know, in a couple of years this guy's going to be right. a dynamic player for your team. Yeah, did you think they were more likely to take a front seven defensive player? I mean, I thought they'd go defense, but cornerback didn't. I mean, doesn't seem like as impact a position at this point. It does, it's not an immediate impact position because I think from a front seven standpoint, that's where they do have their, their most impact players already in place. I think what the corner does is at least allow you to have the coverage that can help enhance your front seven. It, it felt very much like an old school John Butler draft. I mean, remember all the corners he used to love to go after and you never could have enough of those guys? I honestly thought I was taken back in time a little bit uh, with the pick of the corner because it, it, it felt to me like they wanted, and, and this is what Rex will tell you, that you want to play all that single coverage, uh, excuse me, all that uh, blitz defense, you got to play a lot of single coverage behind it, and press coverage, and he has those skills, he has that speed, but I think overall, when you, when you look at it, when does he do this? Because right now, I can't, I can't put him on the field all that frequently. I think he's, he's a player that's going to be a little development. Right. Okay. Well, you know what, too? Part of it, I, you know, we didn't mention that the Bills also signed Alex Carrington, and maybe they had an idea they brought him back. Maybe they had an idea that they were going to do that and then therefore went cornerback knowing that they had an inside track or a good chance of signing Carrington. And maybe that, you know, that makes a little bit more sense because they have a guy that they know has played and can play in the league. Just going, when you're looking at the draft, though, you're looking at some of these Florida State guys, and, you know, Darby and Carlos Williams, both those guys, we're not exactly talking about Boy Scouts here, Vic. Well, with Ronald Darby 
think, no, I, I, I think it's troubling to hear at the very least, at the very least that he might have witnessed a rape and then what was his involvement in it. Again, Janice Winston not charged with anything, Darby not charged with anything, but to, to just be connected with that in any possible way is at least unsettling. And then also to have him involved in a hit and run, at least a passenger in a hit and run situation with a fellow corner on that team. Also, yeah, it wasn't a little uh, fender bender either. I mean, it, oh, I think both cars were totaled. Yeah, so. totaled and, and walked away. Uh, and then to go to Carlos Williams in the fifth round, a position that you don't have the need and, and yet take that, that risky player, uh, I think was the kind of move that just leaves itself open to uh, a whole lot of scrutiny, but only, only in this case. If those players do get in trouble while they're members of the Bills, and and, right. and then we, we start hearing about that kind of thing. I think that's going to be the to me that'll be the issue. If if they happen to keep themselves clean and straight and narrow the whole way, okay, uh, and, and that's what they're counting on at this point. And uh, my sense is that they feel confident enough that these guys, whatever they did, whatever their transgressions were in college, that they're not carrying those transgressions to Western Europe. But right. man, uh, I'll tell you what, the Williams stuff is is really unsettling, especially when you talk about the. Yeah. All right. Listen, Vic, we're going to roll. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Enjoy your downtime. A little of it. You'll be back to work full speed and nothing flat. Back in the pool. That's right. Uh, we're going right, to take man. a break. When we come back, uh, plenty more to uh, talk about, Sully. And switch leagues. We're multi-sport athletes here on the Bucky and Sully Show. <laughs> 